Karen calls the cops because I won't give her my house? Here's what happened. Subscribe to Am I the Jerk and hit the bell for notifications. At the beginning of lockdowns here in Germany, my mother came to me saying I should let her live with me in my house because, wait for it, I'm your mother. Well, I let her move into the granny apartment. It has a separate entrance and has one bedroom, one bathroom, kitchen and dining room, and living room. While she slept in the apartment, she used the main kitchen to cook her meals, but refused to cook shared meals, used the main living room to watch TV, and basically acted as if she owned the house. Any of my complaints, she likewise dismissed with, I'm your mother. It all came to a head when I was working on a computer in the living room. There was a lull while the system setup was doing its thing, so I went to the kitchen to brew tea and have a snack. During this time, my mother went into the living room to watch TV, but I had been listening to Vivaldi's Four Seasons. So she started pulling power plugs in an attempt to shut off the music. One of the first plugs she pulled was of course the computer I'd been working on. When I came back from the kitchen, she rejected any fault for it. According to her, it was clearly my fault because she had to shut off the music to watch TV. So why should she feel free to shut off my music in my house? Not to mention that I had to start over the system setup. Well, because I'm your mother. I countered with, and my mother is a guest in my house. So until you behave like a guest, you better go to your apartment. She didn't like being treated like that one bit. Well, she went to her apartment and then left. I went to a hardware store and bought new locks. Until then, the keys for the main door also worked for the apartment door and vice versa. The inside door connecting the apartment and the main house didn't have a lock at all. So yes, I locked her out of the main part of the house. And then the phone calls started. First from my brother, to whom I suggested he take her in. The house he lives in alone is even larger than mine. Then my older sister, who has two spare rooms in her and her husband's condo since her children moved out long ago, and who didn't like the suggestion she should take our mother in either. My sister's daughter was somewhat surprised when I explained to her that the house belongs to me and not to her grandmother. Her brother only called to get my confirmation about that. My brother's son was actually actually on my side, but warned me about my mother planning something. So a few days later, while running errands, I get a call from the hardware store, from which I bought the new locks. They told me that the police had called them to send someone to open the house. What had my mother done? She called the police for help because her son had locked her out of the house. When the officers at my house confronted me with that, I simply told them to try her key at the door on the side. Obviously, they hadn't done that before. Then they wanted proof that it was actually I who owned the house. Oddly enough, the copies of the deed I had at home were nowhere to be found. So I called my attorney and he sent one of his partners with new copies. He also brought eviction papers telling me to consider it. I simply asked for a pen. A couple of days later, my mother moved in with my brother. Brother, older sister, and her husband helped her with her stuff. Brother made a last effort to make me change my mind. My sister merely treated me with contempt. Brother-in-law told me quietly he vetoed our mother moving in with them before my sister even made the suggestion. But this still isn't the end of it. The police officers are pressing charges for falsely reporting a crime, me locking her out. Everyone and his little brother has called me to take back the charges. Even though I hadn't pressed them in the first place, it's out of my hands, and to tell the police that it's it's all just a misunderstanding, or at least to put in a good word for her. Why? Of course, because she's your mother. But honestly, am I the jerk? So, you know, in a slightly different situation, I feel like I might have said yes. But in this case, he tried several times to explain to her that this is his own space and she can't just do what she wants in it. She even has all of her own space downstairs with a full living room and kitchen and all those things. If you want to spend time upstairs with the family, then sure, that's understandable. But you can't just come up and dominate the area of his own house. And the go-to excuse of I'm your mother just doesn't fly. Also, the fact that none of the other siblings were particularly eager to take her in does say something. So I'm gonna have to rule on the verdict of no, not a jerk for this one. It's just a matter of defending your own personal space.
Entitled couple makes the mistake of assuming my wife works here. My wife and I are senior citizens. In other words, we are old. My dear wife is a strong, independent, take no crap from anyone type of woman. And I adore her for it. She keeps me in line and pushes me to be a better man. And is the reason behind my modest success in life. She's sarcastic, wicked smart, can cuss like a sailor. And as she gets older, her filter is practically non-existent. A few months ago, we decided to treat ourselves, and we made reservations and went to a rather high-end restaurant. They had a maitre d', sommeliers, highly trained wait staff, etc. My wife, even though she's in her 70s, has very little gray hair and can pass for 55. She was wearing a very pretty white lacy blouse, very flattering black pants, and black flats. She looked really good. When we arrived, there was no line, surprisingly, and the maitre d' had apparently stepped away from the podium where he stands. We were waiting there and my wife was right next to the podium and I had sat down at one of the benches provided by the entrance. When another couple came in, without missing a beat, the man walks up to the podium and told my wife, Rockefeller, not the name he used, we have reservations for two. My wife said that she was sure someone would be with them shortly. The woman huffed a little and the man said, please seat us now. My wife told told them she's waiting to be seated, but the man said again, seat us now. So my wife said right away, walk this way. And she walked with them behind her as she walked around the partition separating the entrance to the dining room, circled around to the other end and led them back to the entrance and pointing to the bench said, sit down. The man looked like he was going to blow a gasket, and my wife repeated, I don't work here, you moron. You wanted me to seat you, so sit the F down. As the couple were sputtering, and before it could escalate further, the maitre d' arrived and we gave our name and he led us away. There was no yelling and no threats of police. We had a wonderful meal, overpriced, but oh well, and the other couple was several tables away from us. We didn't interact with them again, but they did shoot us dirty looks now and then. Now, before you say my wife overreacted and could have explained that she didn't work there in a better way, she has a wicked sense of humor and hates idiots. She loves being a smart aleck and is just so good at it. It's one of the reasons that I, after being with her for all these years, still love being put in my place by her when I start getting a little too misogynistic. But I'll let you tell me. Was my wife being a jerk? Yeah, again, this is just another one of entitled people getting put in their place. Embarrassing someone a little bit who's being obnoxiously rude to your face is not being a jerk. In this case, they're probably just ashamed of their behavior and don't want to have to admit to acting like a jerk themselves. It sounds like there was no escalation or harm done over any of this, though. Both parties sit down, enjoy their meals, and go their separate ways. My desktop is not the same as your desktop. So this just happened like a minute ago. One of the team leads in my department was having trouble getting something to work in Excel and pinged me for help. I asked if she could email me the spreadsheet so I could take a look myself. And she sends me a link instead to the spreadsheet on her desktop, as in her C drive slash users slash username slash desktop desktop. I began rubbing my temples because I knew this particular person well enough to know that a simple explanation would not be heard, processed, and acted on. But I had to try anyway. I responded explaining that I can't access files stored on her hard drive and that she needs to send it to me as an attachment. She responds by saying, It's on the desktop. If the link won't work, just open it. I again explained that her desktop and my desktop are not the same thing and I am no more able to open items on her desktop than she is of opening things on mine. She responds, somehow arguing with the guy that she wants help from, if I'm so incompetent, why are you asking me for help, that she's opened the recycle bin, and I have a recycle bin. Therefore, since we both have recycle bins, I should be able to open things on her desktop. This is the point where I dial back the professionalism and let my tenure absorb the hit if she pitches a fit. I say, excuse me, and get up, then turn on the kitchen faucet. I work from home, and I know from prior 
entire experience that it's audible from my home office. I sit back down at my desk and say, I've just turned my kitchen faucet on. Do you have any water in your sink? The silence lasted a good 10 seconds and I swear I could almost hear the hamster wheel in her head straining. And finally, she says, quietly and clearly trying to sound as neutral and unflustered as possible, Okay, that makes sense. I'll send it over as an attachment. But I don't think I was being a jerk, was I? As someone who's worked in tech, this is actually just hilarious to me. No, I don't think you were being a jerk at all. This was just an attempt to make a clear way to understand something that she otherwise wasn't understanding. I totally get how frustrating it can be trying to explain this kind of process to someone who just isn't picking up what you're putting down. And as the tech support guy, I'm sure they have to deal with this all the time. Like he said, he's familiar enough with this lady to know that she's not going to understand a simple explanation. Explanation. He just happened to find a funny and maybe slightly sarcastic way of explaining it to her. No real harm done here. And let's be honest, it was pretty funny. Apparently, I'm a jerk for not giving my grandson a job that I offered him. I always wished my sons would like to follow in my footsteps. I own a small business that pays really well and I wanted them to work for me and learn how to manage it so they can have it after me. But neither of them was interested, which is alright. I understand that they have their own dreams. My granddaughter, who turned 16 nine months ago, was looking for a part-time job. She asked me if she can work from me and learn from me. She's been doing a really good job and is planning to work with me full time after high school. I'm of course very glad that one of my kids is finally showing interest in my job and since she's my granddaughter, I pay her more than I would any stranger. Also, she gets to set her own schedule so basically I'm more flexible with her. My sons and their families were all at my home a few days ago. We were all talking and the conversation went towards jobs. My son asked my granddaughter about her job and was peeved when he found out the payment and schedule. He said that his son, 17, had a job that is harder than hers and pays less. He accused me of favoring my granddaughter and asked me to give my grandson a job. I told him that my grandson had the option to take this job but didn't. He said they didn't know the conditions of this job. I told him there's no opening anymore and I don't want the business to be split between multiple people. Granddaughter is going to get the business. Every Everyone else had the chance but decided not to use it. He called me a jerk and said it's not fair to give her everything and not give my grandson anything. I don't know, am I being a jerk? This just kind of feels like one of those situations where someone finds out after the fact what a good deal they were offered and are just kind of peeved that they turned it down. It's no fault of the original poster that the granddaughter decided to take the position. It had been open for however long and was available to anyone who was interested. She just seems to be the only one that ever really showed an interest in it. I feel like it's hard to get upset after the fact and try and throw blame elsewhere. Definitely not a jerk for this this one. I couldn't help but be honest with my mother-in-law about why I was making my husband sleep on the couch. My husband and I had a big fight last night because of how he was talking about the women his two bosses are married to. Basically, he works at a firm owned by two business partners and their wives despise each other. Everyone at the firm knows it, so they decided to do a prank at the company party and get them to unknowingly wear the same dress. Personally, I didn't think it was funny as I don't like seeing women treated like that, but everyone thought it was hilarious. I recently overheard my husband talking to a co-worker and the guy mentioned having a good picture of it. My husband made a joke about how he should send him that picture as they're both so beautiful it would be like having a piece of art. Needless to say, I was beyond hurt and I had him sleep on the couch. My mother-in-law came over later in the day to pick up our kids. She's pretty nosy and usually when she asks questions, I'm honest and tell her it's none of her business, but I thought she should know what type of son she raised. So when she asked why there were pillows and blankets on the couch, I answered honestly. Mother-in-law thought it was funny and told father-in-law who made a gross comment about how if my husband was more successful, maybe he could have a wife who looked like them. This really hurt my husband and now he's saying that I'm the jerk because I know how his parents are and I weaponize them to hurt him. He feels I was petty as I normally have no issue telling mother-in-law to mind her own business. 
So was I being the jerk? All right, there seems like a lot that's off with this story, and I'm really hoping that my male perspective here isn't skewing me. I feel like having the husband sleep on the couch for this is a bit of an overreaction. This seems like a prank that a bunch of other people kind of started and were involved in, and your husband was just kind of laughing about with a coworker. I could understand her potentially being a little upset over this prank. However, that's just all it is, was a small prank, I feel. No one was hurt, no harm was really done in this instance. What bothers me a lot more is the comment that came from the father-in-law about how if his son maybe made more money he would have a better looking wife, either implying he would be with a better looking woman or she could afford to look better, both of which are offensive. Yet this seems to be the comment that goes almost unregistered by the wife. I don't know, something seems a little off with this whole thing. I don't know. I feel like this whole thing was just a bit of an overreaction. Sorry sis, it's not my fault you never got to go to your dream school. The family dynamic is messy and complicated, but I'll try and clear up any confusion. I'm the oldest out of my four siblings. Me, 43 year old male, Julia, 40 year old female, Kenzie, 27 year old female, and Katie, 23 year old female. Julia doesn't play a part of this. She disowned the family and yeah. Our dad ran out on us and mom was busted for possession among other crimes when Katie and Kenzie were still very young. So they ended up in the custody of my grandma. If you ask them, they survived World War II, but it wasn't that bad. Our grandma was overly protective and tired of having to take care of kids again, but nothing extreme. Her health rapidly declined in their early teen years. I was out of state, so I wasn't a physical caregiver. I was power of attorney, so I was a financial caregiver while they took care of the physical needs. Katie was going to drop out of high school. She barely graduated. This is important for the future. Once she graduated, her and Kenzie came to me. They said they wanted to put grandma in a home so Kenzie could take a manager position. And Katie wanted to get out of town, go to our state capital, take classes at a community college, and transfer to their selective university. She said a teacher who knew her situation believed she had potential to get there and become something great. They said it wasn't possible when caring for grandma. I told them no. They've resented me since. Katie went to a community college in our town and flunked out right away. After grandma died, she went back and has been doing all right. She fell into depression after her boyfriend cheated on her. She was talking about it to Kenzie and myself and said the thing that hurt was the person he cheated with was beautiful, talented, and then she said his affair partner actually goes to her dream school. She said this girl was everything she should have had in life. Well-rounded high school experience, parents to support her, a great education, and now this girl had truly taken everything from her. Then she mentioned she should have been at that school, but she was wiping the butt of something who called her every name in the book for two more years longer than she should have. This isn't the first time she's been tipsy and made a passive aggressive comment. So I told her, Katie, I'm not the reason you couldn't go into your dream school. You failed out right away from community college and would have did the same thing there. You weren't ready and can't accept that. Kenzie told me that I was being a jerk who didn't understand burnout. Am I the jerk? Uh, yeah, this is a situation that I definitely feel like could have been handled in a lot of different ways, and a lot of those probably being better than the way it was handled. It seems like the original poster may have kind of brushed aside how his sisters were feeling. They had stated their displeasure at living with grandma, let alone having to take care of her for an extended number of years. Once the time came for them to properly try and start their lives, they came to him asking for some kind of help and relief. It seems like this maybe should have been considered a little more carefully than just a straight up no. At the end of the day, perhaps a home is the best place for grandma at that point, where she can properly be looked after. It may also be that the original poster just didn't want to have to pay for it and felt he was getting free labor from his sisters. I would like to hope that isn't the intent here, but it seems like that may be the case. I feel like I gotta make the call on this one. You're being a jerk. 
Sorry, husband, I know you want to play video games, but you still have responsibilities. Ever since Modern Warfare 2 came out, all my husband has done is play it. He doesn't help with the baby and gives me attitude if I tell him to stop playing. His father is in town visiting and he's been ignoring him the whole time and has been on this stupid game. I finally snapped at him today and told him I don't want him playing the video game anymore. He needed to wake up today so he could take his dad to meet someone to buy a truck. He's driving back instead of flying, but he wouldn't get up. So I had to take our daughter with me to meet a stranger because he wouldn't get up to go with his dad. I blew up on him by a text telling him that I was sick of this and I was tired of him putting a video game over his family. He told me I was being the jerk for trying to limit his video game time because he's depressed. I'm tired of feeling like a single mom to a video game. Am I the jerk for telling him I don't want want him playing it anymore? Not that it matters because he's still playing it now at 2.18 in the morning. Alright, so this one at face value definitely seems like the husband is probably just trying to avoid doing anything and just wants to play his video game instead. Now, in the interest of listening to both parties' sides of the story, he does say that he's depressed. As someone who's had to deal with depression, I do understand how it can be hard to have to deal with regular everyday situations, and how you kind of want to just be left alone and do your own thing. But it's pretty clear that he has some serious responsibilities here with with a baby in the house and his father in town needing his help, so sometimes you just have to do what you have to do. Sometimes you have to pull yourself out of that hole and just get over that bump and start moving. Once you get going, it's really not so bad and you can get done what you needed to do and then be able to enjoy your game a little bit more without feeling guilty about not having taken care of the tasks you needed to take care of. Original poster, definitely not the jerk in this situation. Husband kind of seems like he's being the jerk and maybe just using depression as an excuse. But it isn't something that you ever want to assume someone is using as an excuse. And if he really is depressed, I hope he's getting the help he needs. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. Put the playlist on in the background to finish listening to all the stories linked at the top of the description. And if you like Am I the Jerk, give Am I the Genius a shot, linked in the description as well. Either way, thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you guys next time.